Hi, welcome to Detours, Understanding Acquired Brain Injury, and welcome to the third of our series on irritability, anger, and aggression. Uh, I want to talk about use of medication as an adjunct to help with treatment for um, irritability, anger, and aggression. Um, the thing is, with these problems specifically, um, one of the things to keep in mind is that medication is not usually going to be your first choice in helping to manage. Medication is good when it comes to treating um, patients who are still not responding to behavioral treatments alone. Um, and the thing about behavioral treatments is it takes time um, to uh, help the patient make the necessary changes. Um, and so um, you will use medication for those patients to help kind of bridge till they've been able to make some of the changes that are necessary and as you're working with them. Also, medication applies with patients who have some cognitive problems and who are having trouble learning you know, uh, appropriate behaviors, or who are having some degenerative changes. Uh, some of the disorders we talk about here, it's not just traumatic brain injury, but there are disorders like CTE, where chronic traumatic encephalopathy, we're used to thinking about this with football players, but anyone who's sustained repeat uh, concussions, uh, multiple car accidents, assault, uh, victims of domestic violence often have received repeat concussions. Uh, and then there are, of course, your athletes. Um, but it's important to note that medication does have a role, but usually it's secondarily. We will be getting to the uh, behavioral techniques later. However, that is another video and that is more complicated. And so we'll be talking about that in depth. But let's talk about some of the medication options. Now, first thing I want to talk about is regarding neuroanatomy, which is why I have my buddy here. Um, the systems that the medications are working on um, are obviously frontal systems, as we mentioned before, and they are we'll be targeting uh, the dopamine pathways, which start deep inside the brain, uh, it, down into the midbrain areas, down the substantia nigra down here, which literally means black stuff, quite literally, because when the anatomists and uh, the early microscopists were looking, um, they found an area that kind of like a mushy black area of the brain, and they, when it was stained and when they examined it, it was the black stuff, quite literally. And those areas also degenerate in Parkinson's disease, and it's where you get some of the movements, movement problems, because dopamine counters acetylcholine when it comes to movement, affecting the frontal lobe, and why you get some of the mechanical cog-like movements, because you need it, the dopamine to smooth out movement um, versus the acetylcholine, which is excitatory. And so balancing inhibitory versus excitatory. But the thing is, dopamine um, outside of motor areas can serve a variety of other functions. And as I said in the neuron video, um, it depends on where a neurotransmitter is. It doesn't always do the same thing. In some areas, a neurotransmitter may serve inhibitory functions. So it's important to keep that in mind. It may serve the exact opposite function in some other areas. It may be both inhibitory and excitatory um, of neurons. And even if it is inhibitory, it may inhibit an inhibitory region of the brain. So it may indirectly be excitatory in function. So this stuff can be kind of complicated and tricky. So it's important to know you know, what, what system you're affecting when you're using medication. And this is part of why medical education is so long and why these residencies are necessary when training physicians. Um, and so why this kind of stuff is, why it's important to understand what your medications are doing. But um, let's move on from that. Um, dopamine, the substantia nigra then, it shoots dopaminergenic neurons out into the frontal lobes and down into... Uh, ventromedial area, which we had discussed before, down into the orbital frontal cortex. It also puts it up into the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. These areas should sound familiar because planning, thinking ahead, 
judging risk, um, anticipating others' behaviors. These things when you talk about irritability and aggression and inhibiting inappropriate responses, all of these things are affected by dopamine. So drugs that act on the dopaminergenic neurons, those pathways will obviously have an effect on in inhibition of inappropriate responses, or if they block it, may increase the likelihood. And those, if you're familiar with antipsychotics, they affect these pathways, but other drugs as well, benzodiazepines, although they tend to act on a different set of neurons. They tend to act on those, the GABA neurons, which alcohol also acts on. Um, again, and if you think about how a drunk person will act and how they may be more aggressive, kind of starts to make some sense um, that inhibiting inhibitory neurons mm, may lead to combativeness, things like that. But these drugs act on the neurons that remain, and that's something else. There are fewer of these kinds of neurons there after a traumatic brain injury, and so using medications alters those neurons that remain, and so important to keep that in mind. All right, so um, different medications for uh, helping with irritability, anger, and aggression. First of all, um, one of the common recommendations for people with problems with irritability and aggression, beta blockers. Beta blockers are used and are commonly recommended for people with increased irritability. Um, the dosage varies um, from person to person. They're from 80 milligrams to around 120 seems to be what's recommended. Um, and this is one of the first line options that is recommended for people who have a healthy heart and because it can affect blood pressure. So uh, propranolol, uh, metoprolol, uh, pindarol, uh, these kind of drugs are the ones that are oftentimes recommended for people who just have like spontaneous anger and aggression after traumatic brain injury and that have problems with irritability. So uh, beta blockers are commonly used as a one of the first line treatments. Uh, another treatment that is commonly recommended um, for people who have problems with this are anticonvulsants. It may seem strange, but there are two reasons for this. The big one is they act as mood stabilizers. They kind of uh, prevent what's called kindling or recruitment of other neurons. And whenever a person is overly excitable, agitated, aggressive, other neurons get kind of recruited into this cascade of rapid firing from one area to another, to another, to another. And the advantage of this, of using anti-epileptics is that it settles this kind of response down. It prevents this kindling response. Um, also, a lot of people with emotional lability or with irritability and aggression have seizures also. And so treating the seizures, of course, helps with treating this as well. Um, but that is another first-line treatment choice. And there are a variety of medications, anti-epileptics, that are effective. Um, Trileptal is one that the research shows works in helping calm down irritability, anger, aggression. It helps bring this under control. Um, valproic acid uh, is another one. Depakote uh, helps. Um, and so does Lamictal as well. Um, so uh, a number of the... Um, anti-epileptics do. Now there's a warning. Keppra does not. Keppra makes things worse. And if you have a patient who has seizure disorders, it can, Keppra can interfere with cognitive dysfunctioning. And there is something referred to as Keppra rage. Um, common, you know, like, so you really want to avoid Keppra if at all possible. Um, some patients really need it, but this is not one you want to give to a person who has uh, problems with anger and aggression. So try and avoid this one unless you really have to. Uh, it does serve a purpose. I don't want to make, I don't want to confuse anyone and say, hey, this does not help. It does, but it is important to know that Keppra has its own set of problems. Also, um, for treatment, um, amantadine. Amantadine is an anti-Parkinson's drug. It's also an antiviral. It's a very old drug, but we found that it works on the NMDA 
receptors of which is another neurotransmitter um, which is one of those that's kind of does both um, it is excitatory in some cases inhibitory in other areas um, but um, this medication amantadine helps people who also have cognitive problems and so it's useful if you're dealing with a patient who maybe not be it's not clearly understanding it's aggressive agitated and it's having problems with thinking and understanding um so amantadine good for those patients uh, so recommendations here are kind of mm, they're they're definitely recommended but it's with some cautions because the studies are kind of a little bit conflicting like in most things in medicine good for some people not good for all and so some experimentation is required um, by the clinician. A lot of things in medicine work this way because each brain is different. You've seen one brain injury, you've seen one brain injury. All right. Antidepressants. Um, there are a variety of choices there. They do help long-term cases. Um, so you're looking at like Talipram. Um, they're looking at like uh, Celexa works um, for long-term for patients with irritability aggression there's studies that support that the use of that um prozac paxil your your classic ssris Meh. it suggests long term it reduces the likelihood again it's not an immediate or fast actor so um important to keep keep in mind that um this would be something you would administer long term again the research shows effective but you know, not something you want to grab for right away because, again, it takes time. And so this will be something, an adjunct with other medication to help with anger, agitation, and aggression. Um, this, A lot of these studies were done by the French Academy of Science. Obviously, they have brain injuries, too, um, over there. And so these were small and medium-sized controlled studies. I do want to point that out. Um, but... You know these are they use the same medications we do and many of these drugs were not developed uh, specifically for traumatic brain injuries in fact none of them really were but research is done on various size populations um also another med is buspar and that seems to be effective as well in some cases again it was a pretty small study but seems to show that it works um, as well as hydroxyzine and Atarax. They, they seem to also, in like two or three uh, case studies of like one or two patients, they seem to work. Um, so those are kind of the, the drugs that are options. Uh, your first choices would be your, your beta blockers, uh, your anticonvulsants, um, then, you know, amantadine would be a choice. And so... Those are the kind of drugs that you, you look for, but most of the interventions are like just going to be behavioral at first, and then you use these kind of medications to supplement. And for longer term, you'll look to an SSRI or something like that to help. It is possible to use in a crisis an antipsychotic. It's not that they don't work. It's just that there's a lot of other issues and a lot of side effects that come with them. And you don't want to use that long term. It's not the kind of thing due to the complexity, but they do help in a crisis. And one of the commonly used ones is is olanzapine and... and uh, Haldol, they're commonly used, um, but they kind of avoid them uh, as much as possible. But in a crisis, they'll use, uh, they'll throw them at a patient in desperation to kind of sedate and calm. Um, Haldol is used, but they really try and avoid those. So those are some of the drugs that are used. There are other agents that can be used also to help. Wellbutrin is recommended and there, it's shown a positive effect. Generally, that's what's used. We will talk about uh, the behavioral techniques next. So just wanted to do a brief overview. And at some point, we'll go in depth carefully into each one of the drugs, dosing and everything else. But I did want to touch on medication. So hope you have a good day and see you next episode. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you like this content. Bye.